What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another video. Uh, another Sunday and another video to share some comment shout outs. So let's get started. So if you're unfamiliar with these comment shout outs once a week, I take a look at my comments from past videos and I do a whole video where I share some of my best comments as a way of sharing love and respect to all the subscribers that are a part of my YouTube community. So let's get started. I have a lot of comment shout outs to share today. The first comment I'd like to share is from my review of Inception as part of the Christopher Nolan Marathon. This comment comes from Anthony A. Perez, who is one of the most supportive YouTubers on my channel so far. I've definitely enjoyed uh, his feedback on my videos, and I've enjoyed his channel as well. If you haven't subscribed to Anthony A. Perez's channel, uh, his channel is excellent. He does a lot of movie reviews, vlog videos. He's got a lot of Star Wars videos coming because he's a big Star Wars fan. Uh, he recently did a video where he got to go to Galaxy's Edge in Florida. And that was an amazing video. As a Star Wars fan, I'm a little jealous but since I don't live that close to Disney World. But hopefully I'll go there one of these days. I'll leave a link to all the YouTubers who've commented with YouTube channels in the description down below. So in this comment from Inception, he writes, Great review, man. I love this one. I recently got the Blu-ray for five bucks, but I haven't given it a revisit just yet. I plan to very soon. I can relate to that. I buy a lot of movies a lot in the bargain bin, and it, I, I always have a time figuring out the time to watch these movies. So I can definitely relate to that. But if you get the time to revisit Inception, it's a must. The movie's amazing. Every time I watch it, I get something more out of it, and it's all around an excellent film, and in my opinion, one of Nolan's very best. Next up, I got a comment from Simply Cinema. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel down below as well. He also has an account on Letterboxd, which I'll leave a link to as well. And he commented on my first thoughts and first reaction video on Aladdin, uh, the live action remake. And he writes, really enjoyed this one, but of course the classic Lion King is so good that the live action version did super well for me as well. So Aladdin isn't my favorite live action. But uh, from what I understand, you still really enjoy that film and you rank it really high. Just your preference is the live action Lion King. And uh, yeah, I can, I, I can see that. I know fans of the live action Lion King. I wasn't the biggest fan of Lion King. I got into Aladdin a lot more. I think it's because this version of Aladdin was not a shot-by-shot -shot remake. There are some new elements to the film. I especially loved the expansion of Agrabah as a kingdom and also Jasmine's expanded role in the live-action film while still respecting and honoring the original classic. And those are the live-action remakes that I dig more than the ones that are uh, blander and safer. Uh, the next comment I'd like to share is another one from Anthony A. Perez and this was from my commentary video on Iron Man and he writes, great commentary man. I definitely appreciate the feedback and coming soon I do plan on doing more commentary videos. I know I've said it in other videos but it's just about finding the time and I think in the next week uh, I'm going to do the next MCU commentary with my sister and we're going to do The Incredible Hulk. Uh, we plan on going for all the MCU films. I'd love to do commentaries on the Star Wars films as well and maybe do some on the Disney animated films and other reviews that I've done past or commentaries that I've done past reviews on. I want to try to build that side of the YouTube channel because the Iron Man commentary was a lot of fun. I enjoyed making that video. Next up, I got another comment from Anthony A. Perez who commented on my July haul video. He writes, Great haul, man. I want to buy new movies. I think everybody that has a YouTube channel just loves to do the haul videos and buy movies. The, the, the problem with that, especially for me, is I don't have, I'm on a budget, so I can't really go out and go on a shopping spree every day and buy movies. That one, that one was luck though, because there were some good deals, but still, I'm still on a crunch. That's why on the August video, I, I, I scaled back a little bit. Oh, well, Black Friday, I try to save some money for Black Friday, because 
I did the splurge on Black Friday. Next two comments are on my first comment shout out video when I came back from Tennessee and decided to change the format of comment shout outs. And this next comment comes from Kent Kentley. He has an account on Letterboxd where it goes by Patrick Delmore. Once again, I'll leave a link to his Letterboxd account if you're interested. And he writes, your channel is awesome and continues to be so, making something more personal and more tied to your beliefs will improve and strengthen your audience. I'm going to try and do Tony Scott's films next year. I think you should do Francis Ford Coppola next, mostly because I want to hear you talk about Peggy Sue Got Married and Jack. So yeah, I definitely appreciate your support. I'm still working on trying to improve the personality of the channel. That's why if you see in my newer videos, I do Bible verses at the end of a lot of my videos to try to strengthen the faith of my Christian audience. Mentioning the directors, I will say the window is still open for a request of the next director's marathon I'm going to do as this week I'll be wrapping up the Christopher Nolan marathon with Dunkirk. I do appreciate your request. Uh, Tony Scott, I'd love to do because it gives me an excuse to review Top Gun, which he directed, and Top Gun 2 is coming out. But Francis Ford Coppola, I love, the, I love the review a lot of his films as well. My favorite movie of all time is actually The Godfather, which he directed. So, I, I'm, I, I know Jack is considered one of his worst films, so that'll be an interesting one to talk about. And then he also commented on that same video, thanks for the shout out, and you're going to get another shout out right here, so there you go. Definitely curious on uh, what the next uh, director I'm going to tackle is. I'm open to doing either one of those two, or any other director, so definitely uh, leave your feedback in the comments below on um, what, what director I should tackle next. All right, my next comment is another one from Anthony A. Perez who commented on my review of Shaft, the 1971 version, the original. He writes, I haven't seen this movie in many years, so I can't fully speak to it, but I remember enjoying it. And more power to you for enjoying that film. I know I'm in the minority on the original Shaft. Uh, there's aspects of it I did enjoy, particularly the score uh, Richard Roundtree's performance. Some of the themes, but the overall narrative I thought was a little too repetitive and meandering, and I didn't really get that invested, unfortunately. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. I know I'm in the minority, and uh, ho hopefully you get a chance to revisit it again. It's definitely an interesting little film. Uh, I got another comment on the uh, first comment shout-out video, which is listed as another channel update. Uh, this comment comes from Filmstock. This is another channel I'm subscribed to. Definitely, definitely take a look at their channel. They have some awesome movie reviews on their channel. Uh, one of the guys on the channel, Chris writes, appreciate the shout out. Keep the videos coming, and I'm excited to hear your thoughts on Interstellar and Dunkirk. The Interstellar review is up, but Dunkirk is coming. I plan to watch Raging Bull soon so I can cross it off the list. The Departed is my favorite Scorsese flick, so I highly recommend you watch it soon. Looking forward to your thoughts on Raging Bull, if you make a video to that. The Departed is coming. I got a lot of Scorsese films left. I'm currently in the 80s side of Martin Scorsese. I got a, So I got those films to tackle. Uh, my next one's After Hours. I just did The King of Comedy. And I'm also going to do Last Temptation of Christ, The Color of Money. Then, of course, I'm, I'm going in release order, so I've got the 90s releases he did, like Casino and Goodfellas and Cape Fear, and then some of his 2000s releases before The Departed, I know, Gangs of New York and The Aviator, but The Departed is considered one of his best films. I know it won Best Picture, so that makes me the more excited to see the film, to see if the... Academy was right on that selection, so I'm excited to see The Departed. I hope you enjoy Raging Bull. It's definitely among the top tier Martin Scorsese films. I do highly recommend it, especially De Niro's performance. Next up is another comment from Anthony A. Perez, who commented on my review of Rosewood as part of my John Singleton Marathon. He writes, I've never seen this one. Good review, man. Appreciate the feedback. 
This is one a lot of people hadn't heard of. And I do recommend that more people watch it. Yes, it's a difficult watch. It dives into a historical tragedy. But I think it's an important watch. And I do highly recommend it. I actually think it's John Singleton's best film. I think it's even better than Boys in the Hood. Next up is another comment from Anthony A. Perez who commented on my review of What's Up Doc, the classic comedy from 1971 or 2, I think. He writes, I've also never seen this one. I enjoyed hearing you talk about it, though. I hope this review inspired you to check it out for yourself. It's definitely a wild, bonkers, slapstick comedy from the 70s. Kind of reminded me of Looney Tunes a little bit watching it. And it's also a great little homage to the classic Bringing Up Baby. That one I had a lot of fun with. Next up, another comment from Kent Kentley, who commented on my review of Melody Time as part of my Celebrating Disney series. And he writes, Okay, I really need to watch Hunchback now. I didn't realize that it seriously gave consideration to Christianity. When I was a kid, Christian songs were just songs. I'm glad Johnny Appleseed made the prayer song mainstream for Disney fans. I bought all the package films last year and don't regret it at all. Oh man, if you hadn't seen The Hunchback, I think it's one of the most underappreciated Disney films of all time. It's definitely among their darkest films and the way that it shows persecution, some of the corruption that happens in the church, but there's also... There's also an underlying theme of tolerance in there. Like, even though you see some of the abuse that people have in the church, you also see the good of humanity, even in the darkest of times, uh, with characters like Esmeralda sh uh, sharing some love to a character that's been abused and hurt all these years. So I definitely... Highly recommend The Hunchback. It's among my favorite Disney films. Yeah, Johnny Appleseed. I know a lot of people I've seen online. Uh, apparently, they, they've they sung that prayer song Johnny Appleseed sings. And if they were in, like, re like, church, like, religious schools or something. And they when they later learned it was from Johnny Appleseed that made them appreciate the song more. That was definitely for me. It's actually among the more underrated Disney songs, in my opinion. And it's neat that there's some schools or, or schools with a religious vibe. I think more so than public schools, obviously. But uh, I'm, I'm glad there's... I'm, I'm glad it's being sung somewhere. It's a cool little song. I really like it. And the package films in general, I think, are pretty underrated, a lot of them. And I think Melody Time is among my favorite of the package films. So the next one I'm doing in this series is probably my favorite. That one I plan on tackling this week, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. And then Ken Kentley did a response to my original reply after I replied to his last comment. And on that same video, he writes, I bought the Blu-ray of Ichabod and Mr. Toad in October. I was really excited that The Reluctant Dragon was a special feature. Any chance to review that one? I've actually seen The Reluctant Dragon. If you're unfamiliar with The Reluctant Dragon, it's a documentary type film that came out in the 1940s and it was a behind the scenes look at what the Disney studio was like back then. And there's a few short films in there. One of them is The Reluctant Dragon. It's a really neat little short as well. That one's really good. Uh, the problem is that movie's hard to find. I saw it on TCM one time. And I didn't realize it was released as a bonus feature on the Ichabod and Mr. Toad Blu-ray. That is really awesome. I own the original DVD of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. I don't know if anybody remembers the gold classic DVD collection that that line Disney released in the 2000s. That's the DVD I own. I might want to consider upgrading, honestly. But if Reluctant Dragons on Disney Plus, that's probably when I'll do a Celebrating Disney review so I can review some movies that I don't own that are harder to find that's on Disney Plus. I think that would be great. So we'll see what happens. And if there's any other live action Disney films you'd like me to tackle on Celebrating Disney, you can leave your thoughts in the comments below. Next up, I got a com another comment from Filmstock who commented on my first reaction video on The Farewell. 
and they write, have yet to see it, but I've heard great things. Must watch, especially if you're a diehard film fan. Uh, the filmmaking in that is remarkable for a first time director. If you're an A24 fan, I think it's a must watch. And I need to see more A24 films. As my viewings of A24 are very slim. Next up, another comment from Filmstock who commented on my review of Interstellar as part of my Christopher Nolan Marathon. Uh, one of the guys, Chris, writes, Really solid movie that is mind-bending, no doubt. Easily one of my favorite McConaughey roles. Of the movies I've seen, I think... Yeah, I think his best performance I've seen is Interstellar. Now, a big snub of his I have not seen is Dallas Buyers Club, which apparently he won the Oscar for. So I'm interested in checking that out. But Interstellar is great. Uh, his performance in that is very remarkable. It's a step up above a lot of, like he was considered a joke for a while because of some of the comedy films he was in. Uh, I also really like the action movie he was in, Sahara, back in 2005. I know it bombed, but I always really dug that film. I don't know if anybody else enjoys that film. Leave your thoughts down below on Sahara. I think that film is criminally underrated. Next up, I got a comment from Anthony A. Perez, who commented on my top 10 movies I hadn't seen list. He writes, nice list, man. I definitely appreciate the feedback. I also got another comment from Anthony on my review of The Invisible Man, the classic Universal Monster film. He writes, a classic that I want to rewatch. Great review. That is an amazing film. This is my first viewing of The Invisible Man, and I was really impressed with it, especially visually, how they were able to pull off with some of those effects back then. That was really incredible. Uh, in my opinion, it's the first great Universal Monster film. Definitely a step up, in my opinion, from Dracula, Frankenstein, and The Mummy. Uh, pretty soon on my channel, I'll do the next installment in that series, which is Bride of Frankenstein. Which is one of my favorites in that franchise, so I can't wait to review that one. Then the last comment I'd like to share is from Kent Kentley, who commented on last week's comment shoutout video. And this was his response when I talked about... Christian cinema in general. And he writes, I'm glad you don't care for the Christian movies you mentioned you didn't care for. The two, I, the two I brought up were Saving Christmas and God's Not Dead. Have you seen The Boy Who Could Fly or Amazing Grace and Chuck? To be honest, I've never heard of any of those films. I can't say if they're good or not because I hadn't heard of them. Uh, then he also writes, I'm excited to hear what you think about The Last Temptation of Christ when you get to that as well. Yeah, I've heard interesting things about that one. That one is very controversial from what I understand. I think they took a lot of liberties with Jesus' life from what I understand. But I'm intrigued by it. Usually the more controversial the religious film, the more interested I am. One of my favorite Christian films is Passion of the Christ, which is a very controversial film. And I really dug that film. Uh, I did mention uh, some of the upcoming Scorsese films we're going to get to before Last Station of Christ. Right now, just After Hours and The Color of Money, I just posted King of Comedy. And, he, and his reply was, I have The Color of Money out from the library to watch soon. It's a follow-up to The Hustler. From 1961, which you should check out. Yeah, thank you for mentioning it. I know, I knew The Color of Money was a sequel to The Hustler, but I'm glad you reminded me about that because I am interested in checking out the original 1961 film. I know it stars Paul Newman. I know he reprises his role in the Scorsese film. And I'm definitely going to have a review of The Hustler on this channel sometime before I tackle The Color of Money because... I've heard it's an excellent film. I think it gives me some background before diving into The Color of Money. And there you go. That wraps up the comment shout outs in this week's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you to all who have been a part of this channel so far. I definitely appreciate the feedback. If you'd like your comments to be seen in future comment shout out videos, all you gotta do is share your thoughts down below, not just in this video, but in any of my videos, past or future. And if they're respectful, your comments can be seen in future comment shout out videos. It's as simple as that. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. We are really, really close. As of filming this video, we're at 87. Uh, when we get to 100 subscribers, I plan on doing a giveaway on this channel to celebrate the milestone. So definitely look forward to that milestone when we get there. Definitely continue to share this channel. If you're a fan of movies and TV, anything like that, a wide variety, this is meant for you guys. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button to see more content and to see this channel grow. If this is your first video, Besides comment shoutouts, I also do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!